Hi guys. All right, so today we are gonna cover how to set up a buyer on an MLS search. All right, so if you can see my screen here, this is your MLS homepage. You're gonna go here to contacts. So you'll use this whenever you have a buyer who says, I'm looking for this kind of house in this price range in these towns. You can go in and set up a search on MLS so that the buyers will receive any new listings that come up that match their criteria. You can also use this tool for sellers to keep in touch with them if they want to keep tabs on what has recently sold. Um, I'll show you how to do that as well. All right, so the first step is to put your contacts into MLS. So again, this is not your CRM. This does not replace command. Don't put everyone in here. Only put people who you are working with as a buyer or they're at least a lead and they've told you some criteria and they've agreed to receive updates from you on the market and what's currently available. So we're gonna go to new. I'm not going to actually put in info and save it because um, I have a weird admin account. So this is the name of my real account, but you put in a name, test, test. You put in an email, test at gmail.com, okay? You don't have to put in any other information. You only have to put in a name and an email and then you hit save. Now let's pretend that that's saved. Oh, okay. So then you're gonna go back into your contacts, click on a contact and go to searches. This is where you're going to set up a search. Now, don't get confused. You're not going to use the search function up here. You're going to use the search tool down here. You're going to hit new contact search. You can name it something if you want. You don't need to. But if you have a buyer who's looking for a primary residence and an investment property, those are going to be two different searches. So you can name them two different things. So when the buyer clicks into it, they'll see it. The email frequency, that's very important. How often do they want updates? If it's someone who's like, I'm not really looking right now, but yeah, I want to keep an eye on the market, whatever. Maybe they want an email once a week or even just once a month. Most buyers, especially in this market, are going to want it every 15 minutes or every hour. So again, what happens is the first email they receive will have all their matches that currently exist in MLS. The subsequent emails will only have matches that are new, back on the market, or had a price change. So the first email could be quite long. The next ones won't be as long. It'll just be updates. Okay, so you have some options here. Notify matches, uh, notify the buyer or the client when matches go under agreement sold or rented. This might be a good option if you're putting a seller on this sort of drip campaign so that it can keep tabs on what in their neighborhood is going under contract. Notify of upcoming open houses. That's a good option for your buyers. And then you can choose your property type. You can choose the statuses. These will already be pre-selected. So I would just keep them here for buyers. Though so that's what they want. They're going to want all of that. Um time frame that only applies to off-market properties. And then here's where the, so this will look very familiar. This is your standard search criteria. You can put in your number of bedrooms and bathrooms. Remember if they're looking for a three bed, two bath, you always wanna do three plus, okay? So that will bring in anything, three bedrooms, four bedrooms, five bedrooms, just in case, just in case. Same thing with bathrooms, if they want Two bathrooms, okay. Does it need to be two full bathrooms or is one and a half okay? Ask that question in the buyer console so that you can set up your search criteria appropriately. Two full bathrooms will limit the will limit the matches, especially if they're looking for like a condo in the city. Um, you're more likely to find more one and a half baths. So what that would look like is either one plus, 1.1 plus, Okay, that means one full, one half, but always put the plus, otherwise you're not gonna see all the additional matches. 
If they say they want 2,000 square feet, do not put 2,000 square feet. Have more conversations around that. Would 1,800 be okay if it feels bigger? Would 1,900 be okay? What's important about the number 2,000? Or is that just the number they came up with in their brain? If they're a little more flexible, if they say 2,000 square feet or bigger, I might put, okay, let's see what we have for 18 plus. Because if you put in only 2,000 square feet, you're not going to have very many results here. We're going to, we'll do an example here. Um, the price is important. You want to put the price ceiling. You might also put a price floor, depending on which market you're in right now, um, what price point. Let's say they're looking up to 950. Okay. Computer's being slow. All right. Notice up here, the results count will keep changing depending on the criteria. So right now I didn't put in the beds and bath. Let's do that. Let's do three plus. And you know what? They, they're gonna want two full baths. Let's pretend. Okay, so we have three plus, two plus, single family. So here you can put in your towns. You can either type the towns in this little box and hit add, or if they're trying to be around a certain location, let's say their place of employment, you can do a radius search and that's pretty cool. So what that looks like, I'm gonna put in Framingham. Okay, let's say they wanna be within 10 miles of Framingham. Put in the zip code, put in 10 miles. Now the count's gonna change. Now it's down to 61 results. So within 10 miles of that zip code, there's 61 results of at least three bed, two bath under 950. Now let's say they said, okay, we definitely want 2000 square feet. Okay, cool. Let's put in 2000. See what happens. Guess what, zero results. Cause zero houses say exactly 2000. That's why the plus or the range, you could do a range as well. You could do 1800 plus, and that gives you everything 1800 and above, 42 results, that's better. Or if they're like, we really don't wanna clean a 2,500 square foot house. Okay, how about 1800 to 2200? Let's see how many results we have, 15. All right. So that's not a ton to work with, but it's some, if they feel strongly about not having a giant house, that might be a better option. All right, so once you have all your criteria in there, then you're gonna hit save search. I'm not gonna do it, because again, this is just a test. You're gonna hit save search, and then you're gonna be able to go into matches and see all of the properties that they will be seeing, okay? Now on their end, they can go in and they can click favorite. You'll see a little heart or they can click the green showing request star and you'll see that obviously green little star and that means they want to see it. So this is an interactive platform for them. And I would also recommend sending yourself a copy too. Um, all right, so those are the basics of how to set this up. Let's do one real quick for keeping in touch with a seller lead. This is kind of a different way of thinking about this. So for a seller lead, you'd come back in, you'd start a new search. You can have multiple searches for the same client, for the same contact. Let's say they're looking for a multifamily. And they're like, we just want to see, no, you know, we'll keep a single family. Let's keep a single family. They're like, we want to see what is going on in our town. We want to see what is selling and for how much. So we're going to change the statuses to sold and under agreement and contingent. And then we're going to come down here. We're just going to put one town. Let's put Framingham. Let's spell it right. And here's where the off-market timeline will be important. Let's say they just wanna keep track of what has sold in the past month. They don't need a whole six month history all the time. Let's just keep up to date of what's sold in the past month. 
82 results. Okay. Now, if they really want to get specific, they can put in, you can put in a specific address and again, do a radius. Let's put in 460 Franklin Street in Framingham. Oh, I typed that on. 01702. Now, with the radius search, you can do one mile. Let's see how many results in one mile. 14. What if they're really specific? They're like, only my little area. Now, it, it won't know neighborhood boundaries. It's not that smart. But you could do half a mile search, just half a mile around their address. You could even do quarter mile. Two results. So if they really want to get specific and see what the activity is in their neighborhood, this is a, a good hack for that. All right. Okay. I think that's pretty much the gist. Let me know what questions you have. And thanks for watching.